Downloading remote images is a really common task in mobile applications. You'll usually have to render a list of images in a table view, in a collection view, and typically you have to download these asynchronously while the user can scroll through your table view or your collection view. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to set up and use SD Web Image, which is a popular iOS library for handling the downloading of images asynchronously in literally one line of code. So let's open up Xcode and get started. The first place we're gonna to wanna to head over to is the github.com SD web image page. And here is where the repository lives and all of the documentation and instructions for what SD web image is, how to install it and how to use it can be found here on this page. And for installation, what we're gonna do is use CocoaPods. And if you scroll down here, there are CocoaPods installation instructions as well as Carthage if you're using Carthage. So I'm gonna use CocoaPods, but let's go ahead and go into Xcode and get our pod file set up and go ahead and install SD Web Image through CocoaPods. If you're not exactly sure how to actually set up CocoaPods, there is a link here on the GitHub page, and if you click it, it should take you over to the CocoaPods.org page, and that'll give you instructions for how to actually install CocoaPods if you don't have it installed at all. So you might need to do this as a prereq before we can actually install the framework. Now I've set up an empty pod file in the root directory of my project. And you can create a pod file in any text editor. Um, you can just literally create a new pod file with no file extension, and that's good enough. Now, going back to the documentation, if we scroll down to the section here for platform, iOS 8, use frameworks, pod, SD web image, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and go back to our pod file and just paste that in like this. But I'm gonna also say that the target SD web image tutorial for the iOS target is gonna be the target that uses the pod. So I'm gonna modify this slightly by just doing this target name just like that. And that just sells CocoaPods that our app target is the only target that's gonna be using SD web image. Now, what we can do is go ahead and run a pod install and verify that we actually get the SD web image framework installed successfully. All you should have to do is run pod install from inside of the directory where your pod file is. And um, it looks like you, if everything goes good, you should see that it creates a workspace. So, um, what we can do here is open the project workspace instead of the project file, and we should be good to go. Now my pod is successfully installed. I have my pod sub project in here, and I can see SD web image. I can expand it, and I can see all of the source code for this dependency. And uh, what's interesting to note is most everything is a category-based extension for how the asynchronous image downloading and caching is done. So you can use it off of an image view almost directly as you would any category method that you might write for other functionality, which is kind of nifty. And if we go back to the documentation, if we scroll back a little bit to the usage, it's actually pretty simple. It's really almost just one line of code. Uh, the extension method sd underscore set an image with the URL for the remote URL that you're gonna wanna download the image from a placeholder image that basically stands in until the remote image is loaded. And uh, we're gonna walk through how to simulate this. And I'm going to use just my local host, which I have some images on my uh, local host web server to pull from and also throw in a placeholder image while we wait for this to come back, just to see how you can exercise it in a real life scenario. Now for the rest of this lesson, it's gonna really just be a watch and listen as opposed to code along and follow, because I've set up an environment that makes this easy to simulate and you might not be able to do it in the length of this tutorial, but at least you'll understand how this framework works and how to apply it to your code. So like I mentioned before, we had this placeholder image and all it is, is it's an image that you can add to your .xc assets, and it can be anything you want. And this is kind of the loading image that stands in while the remote image is being downloaded. So I just happened to pick an arbitrary Apple logo from online. I created a new image asset and just dropped it in there and called it placeholder. 
And so this is going to represent the placeholder image. And you'll see it once we start actually going through the scenarios. Now in the view controller, let's go over what I did in here. Um, I created a really simple data structure. That's a programming language, which just comprises a name of an image and a programming language name, both of which are strings. So it's pretty simple there. The data source for our table view, because all of this is going to be in a, in a table view list, is just the programming languages. And like I said earlier, I'm hosting all of these images on my local host uh, for the sake of simplicity. That's why this is kind of tricky to emulate unless you set all this stuff up in advance. Now, inside of my actual data source implementation here, all I've done is just created new instances of the programming language struct for all the different languages in the list. So Go, Swift, C Sharp, C++, all the way down through Objective-C. So that's what our data is going to look like. And if we scroll down to, and I mean, this whole view controller is not even 100 lines long. It's really, really simple. The table view data source and delegate, all it is is returning the counts for the programming languages. Our cell is going to be 125 for the height. And self road index path is actually going to be the code that we're going to actually implement here for downloading the image. Now, if we run this right now in the simulator, let's take a look at what this currently looks like as is without downloading. Without downloading, it's just going to render back the programming language name into the cell. And I'm just using the generic UI table view cell. I'm not subclassing it or doing anything else. And so what we want to do is actually get that asynchronous image to download and render in our table view cell. So that's what we're going to implement right now. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually go and import the SD web image framework at the top of our view controller like this. So import SD web image, and that gives us the category methods we need for the asynchronous downloading. And to access the category methods, what we can do is we're going to use the table view cell and in case you weren't aware of this, the cell has an image view by default. And it's just if you command click into the cell, you have a image view and a text label and a detail text label if you're not subclassing it. So that's where I'm going to be using uh, these methods off of. The extension category methods look like this. So st underscore set image. And I'm going to use the first overload here. And um, what we're going to do is kind of set these up one by one. There's a lot of parameters in here. But the first parameter is going to be the remote image URL that we want to use. So um, in this case, what I'm going to do is take a step back, let remote image URL equals the programming languages collection at the index path dot row dot language name. And what I need to do here is append the name of the image to the base URL that we have up above. So to do that, I'm just going to do this base URL dot appending path component. And that path component is going to be the name of the language because that's going to match up with the name of the image. And um, we'll just give that over to the remote URL. and put the remote image URL here. Now the placeholder image is what I mentioned earlier. We locally added that in. So if we scroll up to the top here, it's just a UI image with that placeholder name. So I'm just gonna drop that in here. For the options, you have a few different options for how SD web image is gonna download stuff. So if I clear this out, and we command click in, we can see that there's tons of different options here to use when downloading things. There's retry failed, low priority, refresh cached, continue in background, tons of different things. I'm just going to use the high priority, which is just arbitrary at this example, but you can read up on this if you're interested in learning more about what these are and how they work. The next parameter is context. And I'm not going to use that for this, so that's OK. The next parameter is a progress block. Basically, as your image starts to download, if you uh, implement this handler, you'll get progress updates for how much longer that image is going to take and what the download progress is currently at. But since this is a simple example, I'm going to pass it nil. 
And then there's the uh, completion block. So um, for this one, what I'm going to do is implement it because I kind of want to know. And we'll just call this downloaded image, download exception, cache type, download URL. And uh, I'll just go ahead and clean up this formatting a little bit. What I can do in here is just if let download exception problem downloading the image, and we can just print out the localized message else. Successfully downloaded image. I'm just going to print out the URL that came back there. And um, let's go ahead and run this right now and see what this looks like. Let me fix that there. OK, let's run this in the simulator and see what our images are. So in my simulator up here, you can see that all of my images have been somewhat downloaded, but this doesn't look quite right. These are all the placeholder images. And it turns out I actually made a mistake. I used the language name for the URL instead of the image name. But it actually shows what happens when an image cannot be downloaded, um, which uses the placeholder image in place of the remote image. So now, using the actual correct URL image name, let's run this one more time. So each image is being downloaded and rendered right into the cell. And it's really as simple as one line of code, which is the SD set image. Now there's other properties and attributes for SD web image that you can read up on in the documentation. There is a caching mechanism that goes on internally, and I'm not going to get into it in this lesson, but you can tweak all those settings and learn what they do and how they operate. So you can control if images are cached or if the cache should be cleared and all of those kinds of things. And like I demonstrated earlier, you saw what happens if you make a mistake or something can't be uh, successfully downloaded. Let's say, for example, I botch the name of C Sharp right here for the image that is going to be downloaded from the localhost server. You'll see that all the other images actually render, but C Sharp has the placeholder logo here because I have no such image by that name. And so it's pretty useful in that aspect. And again, you can implement all of this yourself with your own networking code. But if you're comfortable using a third-party library and you're allowed to do it and you don't want to deal with the hassle of having to write all your own networking code to do this, then SD Web Image might be a good alternative for you just to get up and running and then go back and figure out if you want to write that code yourself later on in the future. So that wraps up this lesson. Hopefully you found this helpful and you can see how easy it is to take advantage of this library in your app if you don't want to have to go through the hassle of writing your own networking code to handle image downloading for you. If you found this video helpful, you know what to do. Go ahead and smash that like button. Consider subscribing to CodePro to stay up to date for all the latest lessons. Make sure to follow CodePro on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, Skillshare, and Udemy. Make sure to check out my full-length iOS developers course for beginners. You can find sign-up links down below in the description for 50% off the course price. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I will catch you in the next one.